Hey everybody, real fast, I'm gonna go over the things that we recommend pre-wiring in any home. When clients send us their design plans, whether it's our local clients or when we do design plans for clients across the nation, part of our pre-wire design services, this is what we recommend designing or pre-wiring for your home. Well, real fast, so one of the questions we always get asked is with all the advances in wireless technology, should you actually pre-wire or should you just do everything wireless? And our attitude is that you should pre-wire like crazy, pre-wire, pre-wire, pre-wire. I remember an interview with Steve Jobs, he was asked if uh, laptops and tablets would eventually do away with personal desktop computers. And he used the analogy of trucks and cars and he said, we're always gonna need trucks to do the heavy lifting and cars to do the lightweight stuff. And I think the same is true in our home. We're always gonna have need for wire in the home, whether it's fiber or Cat6, we're always gonna have needs for wire to do the heavy lifting in the home. And then we're gonna use the wireless application for everything else in the home. So this is what we recommend wiring in the home and what's not here, we often do wirelessly later. So first thing we're gonna talk about is the home network. Okay, so now obviously there's a lot of wireless things we're gonna do on our network, but there are some things that we want hardwired if we have the option. Uh, we want all of our TVs to be hardwired into the network. We want our entertainment centers hardwired into the network. If you have a desktop computer that's kind of permanent or even a, a location where you're gonna hardwire in your laptop regularly, we want a network connection there. And then on our hotspot, what we find is that we wire up a lot more locations for wireless access points than we actually think we're gonna need. Then when the client moves into the home, we leave our options open. We can see if the access point gives us the coverage we need, we can relocate, and if that doesn't cover us, then we can add on access points. So we definitely wanna hardwire some things into the network. Okay, the next thing on the list that we're gonna talk about is TV or what we sometimes refer to as video distribution. All right, with TVs, there's three things that we wanna cover. Um, we want to hardwire it into the network. So if you're using streaming services like Netflix or if you're downloading 4K content with something like a Kaleidoscape, we want to be hardwired in. It's going to make all the difference in the world. We also are going to send control to the TV and there's a couple of different ways we can send control, but we want it hardwired whichever method we use. And then last and most importantly, we want to send our video content to those TVs. Now there's a lot of ways you can go about this. I see people online whenever we post content, they're like, oh, just run conduit everywhere. What we do is we pull Cat5 or Cat6 to the TV, and then we use something called a video ballon to convert that Cat5 or Cat6 into HDMI later. There's different types of video balance out there. You're gonna hear things that you need one cat six or two cat six. It really depends on the system that you're using for the video distribution. But as a general rule, we recommend two cat six for your video. So if you think about it, you got one cat six for your network, one cat six for control, and two cat six for your video. Most of the time when we know going into a home what system we're gonna use for video distribution, we'll do two to three cat six maximum. But you need to understand there is that possibility depending on on your TV and the video distribution that you're using that you would actually need for Cat6 to manage the TV. Uh, we get asked a lot about fiber. Yes, fiber is an option. This is for people who are planning to do the work themselves. Fiber is not a great option for DIYers. Okay, we're gonna stick to Cat6. Um, and then of course we wanna run a coax to our TVs. All right, next up we're gonna talk about home audio. So home audio is one where we're really aggressive. What we find is when people move into their home and they start using their speakers, they realize they want music in a lot more rooms of the house. And so we're ultra aggressive. And you gotta understand, you can put speakers anywhere. You can put them in the shower, you can put them in the laundry room. We have a lot of clients that put them on the front deck for holiday music. Uh, you can put them in the garage. Uh, you've got landscape speakers that can go out and around the pool. I mean, really anywhere that you think you might listen to music, put a wire. And you can always pull the wire through the ceiling, cut a speaker out and drop a speaker in later as long as the wire is there. So the next thing we're gonna do is theater and surround sounds. Theater is pretty straightforward. You're gonna use, um, you're gonna wire up the speakers in that room. For the projector, we wanna run conduit if we can. HDMI do go bad over time. If you don't have a conduit, you don't have a good way to replace that HDMI. And HDMI upgrades with time. So what was working for HDMI three, four years ago isn't at, doesn't work with current TVs and 4K video content, so you've gotta upgrade the HDMI. Now if you don't have room, sometimes you have like a suspended slab um, ceiling, so you've got concrete above the projector and the builder's not dropping the ceiling enough to fit conduit through there, then we'll use two or three Cat6. That way we have some option if one of the Cat6 is bad, we can use the other Cat6 and we can always use a video, bal a video ballon to keep it upgraded to whatever type of HDMI we need going forward. And then on the surround sound, one of the things you want to consider is we have the surround sound for the theater, 
But we also want to look at our secondary surround locations. These are rooms where we want a little bit more volume than the TV can give us by itself. It's going to be your great room, uh, family room, your master bedroom. We see a lot of covered decks that have a secondary surround sound. This isn't where you're going to spend a lot of money on your surround sound. You're just trying to bring volume into the room. It could be as simple as a sound bar. It could be a 5.1. It could even just be a two-channel uh, external speakers uh, left and right of the TV that are going to give you that extra sound. And so we wire up a lot of secondary surround sound systems in the home. And I'll talk about that in another video, but um, just be thinking about your secondary surround sounds. Next we've got security and surveillance. Okay, so security most of the time anymore is going to be wireless. If you've got a really big home or if you've got a really long home, kind of a rambler that runs left to right, you may want to do your hardwired sensors through your doors and windows because you can have some range issues. Uh, if it's a, a home that's more vertical, you know, two, three thousand feet, it's fifteen hundred feet on each each floor, you can usually get away doing a wireless system. But the keypads require power. So typically we'll run power, um, just a low voltage wire for the keypad locations. That way you don't have to have some transformer plugged into an outlet right next to the keypad. Besides the keypad, everywhere else in the home is going to be wireless most of the time. Okay. With surveillance, yeah, there are a lot of wireless surveillance solutions out there. If you have the opportunity during construction to run wire, run wire. Cool thing with surveillance is you just run a Cat6. And the Cat6 is kind of a wonder wire. So you can use it for your IP cameras, your network based cameras. And if you want to, you can convert it into a coax with a special end and you can use it for an analog camera. It's going to work for you either way. So we just run Cat6. That keeps it simple. It's an easy way to wire up your cameras. And I always recommend doubling up your cameras. It's kind of like audio when people fire up their system and they start to see what the camera's giving them. They're always disappointed about the blind spots and the coverage they don't have in the home. Wire is so cheap. When you're wiring up a corner of a home, drop in two wires to every corner that a camera is going to. And that way you can put two cameras cameras there looking at different directions. It's a no-brainer. So next we've got touchscreens. Companies like Control 4 and Savant, they're going to use uh, touchscreens on the wall and it kind of depends company to company. Control 4's touchscreens work as video intercoms in addition to being able to run everything in the home, your audio, your lighting, your security. Savant's going to run everything in the home but it doesn't currently double as an intercom. And then you have touchscreens like uh, like an iPad that's just a charging station on the wall and you slap it up on the wall it's going to charge and when you're ready to use the iPad you pop it off the wall and you walk anywhere in the house and use the system. You also have some systems like uh, Autonomics Mirage they have a digital keypad for the music system and you have that option. It's the same wire regardless of how you're going to terminate it. You're going to run a Cat6 to that location and then you have your options open for whatever type of system you get. Okay, next we're going to do utilities. This is things like your cable, your satellite, your internet. And this actually really surprises a lot of people. One of the biggest ones we want to get covered is your demarcation. It's a funny word for where the cable and internet comes into the home. And surprisingly, a lot of homes don't have this spec into the home. It's not included. Outside at the side of the home, you have your electrical meter. And right next to your electrical meter, there's usually conduit that's running out to the street. And that's where the cable internet providers, phone providers are bringing those services into the side of the home. We've got to run wires to connect to that location on the side of the home all the way into the inside of the home. Otherwise, when your home's finished, you have this beautiful brand new home and they staple wires around your home and punch a big old hole through the side of the home to bring those services into the home. So we're going to run the demarcation. We do something similar if you know you're going to use satellite. We run a wire up into the attic and then out through the soffit closest to where we think the satellite's going to go. That prevents them from stapling those wires up the side of the home. Um, internet services, if you're doing like satellite internet, you may run some wires just like the satellite that are going to go up 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 to the attic and then out through the soffit. And then of course things like cell phone boosters. If you're in a, a home, especially one that's got a lot of concrete and you need to boost the cell signal, that does require pre-wiring and it pre-wires really similar to uh, like a satellite pre-wire. So these are the utility services that we're going to make sure we pre-wire in the home. So lastly, it's kind of a cop out, but we do um, kind of our miscellaneous category. And this is because it's sort of specific to each home. So this is going to be things like your fireplace switch, uh, video doorbell, maybe your shades and blind control, um, maybe your intercom. So for example, if it's a fireplace, it allows us to switch it on and off. 
then we can pull a low voltage wire into that switch. We can actually tie into that switch and automate it so that you can turn your lights on and off or your fireplace on and off. Uh, shade control, any more, most of the shades that we do are gonna be wireless. Believe it or not, we can do wireless shades that are battery operated that you rarely ever have to change the batteries. But if you're in a large room, like a vaulted great room, and you don't wanna have to get on the ladder every few years and change out the batteries, you know, two stories up, that's a location where we're probably gonna run wire for shade control. Uh, and in some instances, you may even need the electricians to run the wire for you. So we take that kind of on a home by home basis. And then of course, intercom. Uh, intercom's been changing a lot. We're all used to the old systems where you have a keypad on the wall and it may pipe through the speakers, it may not. A lot of the newer systems today uh, allow you to use the intercom, like control four, it's the video intercom tablet on the wall. Um, there are audio systems that allow you to just call out through the speakers through your phone. So the intercom's changing, but sometimes it does require some additional wiring. Again, we take that one on kind of a case by case basis based on each home, but it's something certainly to consider. So these are the eight sort of categories that we look at every time we're gonna pre-wire a home. Um, there's actually a link uh, somewhere in this video. It's a free download. It just gives you a list of what wire to pull for each one of these categories. So if you're thinking about pre-wiring your home, and you just want to know real quick, it's just a quick reference guide. It's going to tell you what to pull for your network, what wires to pull for your TV, what wires to pull for your audio. So it makes it really easy while you're there on site to make sure you're always pulling the right wires. So we'll see you in the next video and uh, hopefully that's been helpful. Be sure to leave us some comments, questions you've got. We'll be sure to answer them in another video.